If you're headed into a child custody or family law case, you may be a little bit worried about your evidence. You may have some concerns that the judge won't let you testify about the things that you want to talk about at the trial. You also could be worried that the judge may disallow some of the evidence that you're trying to admit. So I want to tell you, you're not alone. Your fears are common. I have the same fears when I go into a trial. One of the keys to fixing this issue is being really prepared about the law and what the evidence shows and how it relates to the law. But I am going to touch on in this video some specific strategies for helping you deal with that problem when the judge says nope don't want to hear it so stay tuned my name is wendy hernandez and i'm a phoenix family law attorney and i'm also the creator of command the courtroom if you haven't already checked out the command the courtroom youtube channel check it out now there's tons of videos there to help you if you're going through a family law case whether or not you have an attorney these videos are really helpful if you don't have an attorney but even if you do they're going to help you get prepared and know what to expect in the courtroom if you like the videos be sure and give them a thumbs up. Also hit the subscribe button because if you do that, then you're going to get notified each time a new video is released. So on to the topic of the day, which is what do you do when the judge doesn't want to allow certain pieces of evidence or testimony in as you're going through your trial or evidentiary hearing? So I want to start with a couple of basic things before we get into really what you do. It's important that you understand a couple of concepts in the law. The first concept I want to explain is what it means to make a record. And making a record is actually what it sounds like, and that is creating a record of everything that happens at the trial, everything that's important. And some of the things that are important are, of course, objections, um, situations where a judge is disallowing evidence or testimony that you want to admit, arguments that you make, anything of significance that happens in that courtroom, you need to make a record. Because if you don't, that could have consequences for the future. If you get a result that you don't like, but you haven't made a record, then you're going to waive those arguments basically on appeal. And what the appeals court looks at when it's making decisions about whether to send the case back for a retrial or reversing certain rulings is what the record says. And if there's no record, they have nothing to make a decision on. Now, practically, the way a record is made is in many cases with the court reporter, the person who's in the courtroom, and it looks like he or she is typing. That person is making a transcript of every word that is being said. In many jurisdictions, in mine included, um, now records are made by way of video and audio recording. So if I go to a trial and I want to make some sort of post trial motion, I have to order that recording and listen to it and usually get it transcribed for the court of appeals. But anything that's important in your case that happens at your trial, you have to make a record or the court of appeals just won't look at it. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is talk about offers of proof. And what an offer of proof is, is where you're telling the judge what a certain piece of evidence would show or what testimony would show that the court has already made a decision to disallow. You're making an offer of proof I'm offering, this is what it would prove. And there's a certain procedure to making an offer of proof. If you have a jury trial, you're going through a jury trial, you do not want to make your offer of proof in the presence of the jury. If you're in a jury trial, what you have to tell the court is, Your Honor, I'd like to approach, I want to make an offer of proof. And the court will have you come up to the bench, you and the other attorney, or you and the other party, and then you can tell the court, Your Honor, I'd like to make an offer of proof. If the court allowed this testimony to be admitted or this evidence, evidence to be admitted, this is what it would show. And you have to talk to the court about how that evidence or how that testimony is relevant to the issues in dispute. It's also helpful if you can tell the court what the law is that you are trying to apply to the facts of your case. So let me give you a little example. Say you're in the middle of a custody trial, a contested custody trial, and one of the things that you're trying to bring up is the fact that your ex has denied you court-ordered parenting time in the past. And what if your judge is saying to you, that's not relevant to this determination. That is a contempt issue, a contempt of court issue. So you need to file a contempt petition and then I'll listen to it. Well, it depends on the law in your jurisdiction, but it's kind of my thought, at least in Arizona, that evidence of denial of parenting time is absolutely relevant to child custody because there is a best interest factor that is related directly to what parent is the parent that's more willing willing to allow frequent, meaningful, and continuing contact with the other parent. And I have had a lot of success showing that parent B denied parenting time that was court ordered on numerous occasions or disallowed contact
pack for a year or whatever. And this is relevant to the issue of custody or decision making. So you may be in another state, like I've looked at a couple of other states and their laws and Minnesota has a similar statute. It's not worded exactly the way the Arizona statute worded, but it is similar relative to what parent is more flexible with the other parent. So a denial of parenting time would be relevant to that best interest factor. And by the way, if it's like I'm speaking Greek to you and you don't know what a best interest factor is, first and foremost, you need to download that best interest checklist. So look at the link below and download the checklist if you haven't already. Study those best interest factors and also take a look at some of my other videos on the best interest factors. So getting back to offer of proof, say you're in the middle of a trial and the court doesn't want to allow testimony in about a denial of parenting time. What I would do is I would say, Your Honor, may we approach the bench? And then we'd approach the bench and I would tell the court, I want to make an offer of proof. I would like to present this evidence of my ex's denial of my parenting time. And I think that it is relevant to the current custody proceeding because under Arizona law, ARS 25403 subsection whatever, the court must consider what parent is more willing to allow the other parent frequent and meaningful contact. And this is what this evidence shows that my ex is not that parent. It's relevant to this case. And I'm asking this court to allow it into evidence. And so basically you're re-urging the admission of this evidence. And if the court says no, then you just have to do the best you can. But also you can be sure that you're protecting the court. You're making a record for the court. And this is very, very important. Let's assume in this second example that we don't have a jury. We're not in front of a jury. Then I would just say to the court, I would stand up and I would say, Your Honor, I'd like to make an offer of proof, please. And the judge should let you do that. Tell the judge you're making your record. And you would say, Your Honor, uh, if I were to present these attendance records into evidence, this is what they would show. They would show that during my time, our child is on time every single day. They will show that during my time, there are never absences as the other side is alleging. They will show during my time that all of the homework is done. And that is why they are relevant to this case because one of the factors that the court must consider is the child's adjustment to home, school, and community. That's ARS, Arizona Revised Statute Section 25-403, subsection, whatever it is. And then I would say, Your Honor, I would re-urge the court to admit these attendance records into evidence and then see what the court does. But again, after you go through that exercise and the court still says no, there's nothing you can do, but you know that you have made the record. And if things don't go your way, then that may be a basis on which you can appeal the case. So making the record and presenting these offers of proof can be scary, especially, you know, because the judge is the one in charge when you're in the courtroom. You're not the one in charge. You're going to have to be brave and you're going to have to be respectful and you're also going to have to be firm. I know I'm, you know, I wasn't raised to question authority a lot. So I really have to push myself sometimes when I get in front of a judge. But if I've done my homework and I'm confident in my knowledge and I'm confident in the law, in my knowledge of the law, and I'm confident in what the evidence will show, then I'm firm about it. And you have to be firm and you have to be brave. So you can do this. And um, if the judge doesn't follow the law, then you're, there's remedies that you can seek after the trial is over. If it doesn't go in your favor, there are certain post-trial motions that you can file. And if those don't work, then you're always free to file an appeal and you will have made your record and that will be awesome for you. Another little tip that I have for you, before you go to trial, for every piece of evidence that you have, you should go through and evaluate it and you should make sure that it's relevant to the issues in dispute. And you should also make sure or try to, to the best of your ability to make sure that you can overcome any objections that the other side might have. Um, I created objection cheat sheet where you can fill out um, the piece of evidence, put possible objections and the basis on which you think that you can get that evidence in. So a little tip for you going into trial for each and every piece of evidence, you should look at that piece of evidence and first of all, make sure that it is relevant to the issues in dispute because you need to explain why it matters in your case. And also you should think about this piece of evidence from the other side's point of view. And if you think that there's going to be a potential objection, for example, one objection could be that you disclosed it late. You have to be ready to prove that it was disclosed on time. So be ready with that proof that is going to counter those objections. Also, you have to make sure you know the law and how that piece of evidence relates to the law and be prepared to cite to that portion of your statute that asks 
Miller requires the court to consider evidence like the evidence that you're trying to present. And I know that it's a lot of work, especially if you have a case where you have 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 exhibits. But having this prepared beforehand is going to help you feel more calm during the trial and less panicky because you're not the only one when there's an objection to a piece of evidence and the court doesn't want to let it in. I'm also panicky. But the more prepared you are, the less panic there is and you can go in there with confidence. As always, going into trial, the key is being prepared, knowing what you're going to say, understanding your evidence and knowing the law, being respectful, being calm, being confident. You can do this. If you like this video, be sure and give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Don't give up. Above all, get out there and command the courtroom. I'll see you next time.